Okay guys, we're almost to Bay Mike Shawarma. I have no idea what to expect. This is going to be the magical shawarma that makes me fall in love with shawarma again here in the Philippines. Apparently, the thing that's famous about this shawarma is all the sauce that they use. Their sauce is supposed to be like the best of the best. But yeah, I can't find Babe Mike shawarma. Let's see if this is it. Where is the best shawarma in here? Do you guys Big know Mac! Big Mac shawarma! Big Mike! Oh, Babe Mike! Okay. Babe Mike shawarma. Okay, I'm gonna check out Babe Mike shawarma. Cheese! Panda Come cheese! Pandizal. It's cheese from a panda bear. Panda. Yeah. The sleeping bear, panda. Yeah. Right now I go to try Babe Mike. Uh, okay, okay. I go now. Okay. Yeah. I'll okay. see you guys later. Yo, subscribe bye. Later. Thank you guys. Bye. bye bye. So yeah guys, we're gonna try Babe Mike cheese. Alright, no, we're gonna try Babe Mike Shawarma. Oh wait, this is Babe Mike Shawarma. This is Babe Mike Shawarma. Wait, is this it? In all of Manila, this is supposed to be the best shawarma. No? It looks good though, very masarap. Babe Mike shawarma. The best shawarma in Manila apparently. Okay, I might come back. I'm gonna check out the Babe Mike over there. Okay, so apparently there's two Babe Mike shawarmas here. And this is one of them, and then there's one over here. Uh, my Google Maps says that it's over this way. I would hate to try the wrong Babe Mike shawarma if there's two. It's, one's an imposter and one's real. It's the Filipino Lady Gaga right here. One big chain here is called Uncle John's. So that's basically like your own classic like 7-Eleven or Lawson's or Family Mart. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just a Filipino owned company uh, making like fast food and stuff. There's actually some really good chow bao here now though too. They've actually upped their game on the chow bao level. They've got like pizza chow bao, they've got bola bola chow bao, they've got seasick chow bao. They're you know, like 20 different chow baos it feels like. Yeah, we're almost to the Babe Mike shawarma. I don't know why it's called Babe Mike. That's a very, very weird name. But uh, yeah, we're gonna see what Babe Mike shawarma is all about here. Hello sir, do you know where Babe Mike shawarma is? This one? Oh, right here. Okay. Oh, here we are. This is Babe Mike Shawarma with a line. Shawarma. Oh, Shawarma, hello. Shawarma. Is it Masarap? Oh, Masarap. Masarap. Very nice. Good, very good. Very good. Ooh. So he's cutting it up really nicely. And there's actually a line. So I feel like I want to eat it this one. Ooh, it smells really good. It smells like very nice roasted chicken with strong marination. Who is the Babe Shawarma Mike? I don't know who Babe Shawarma guy is. Sorry, sir, I don't know where. I don't have you don't any know? idea. But oh, who's the owner? I think that girl, I don't know. The girl's name is Mike? Uh, I don't know, sir. Oh, interesting. Who's the owner? Who's the owner, yeah. Huh? Brown. It's Mike. Are you Mike? Babe. Oh, you're babe. How long have you been making shawarma? Eight years. Some people say this is the best shawarma in Manila. Yeah. How do you make your shawarma so good? I call my daughter, okay? You call your daughter? Yeah. Is your daughter the inventor of the recipe? Yes. Oh, what's the number one seller? Rice and pita. Uh, and is it pork shawarma or is it chicken shawarma? No, beef. Oh, it's beef shawarma. Yeah. You've been making shawarma for eight years. So what order of shawarma do you get normally? First time. Ah, uh, first time here. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to order the shawarma with rice or shawarma with the pita? Shawarma with rice. Ah, shawarma with rice. Here in Philippines, you guys love having shawarma with rice. Yeah, everything with rice. Ah, I see. Yeah, this place is very famous, right? Like, yeah. a lot of people come here and really enjoy the pita, enjoy the other dishes here. Enjoy the Shanghai Lumpia. So I've got a question. What makes this shawarma special here in the Philippines? Uh, so delicious oh, and yeah. trash la bas. <laughs> it's the best shawarma in Manila, right? Yeah. Everyone says it is. So what's the taste of this shawarma? Can you explain to everyone that's not here in Manila, that's not here to try it? What's the flavor like? Uh, it's spicy and okay. more on cheese. Oh, very nice. So it's got a lot of cheese in it and yeah. some sauces. Excuse me, sir. What's uh, what's special about this shawarma? So delicious. Very Yummy. delicious. Yeah, masarap. Mismo. And uh, 
how long have you been coming here to Babe Mike Shawarma? Many years? Many years now. Oh, oh wow. Now. So many, many years. So apparently it's like number one in yeah. in all of Manila. Yeah. But is it number one in all of the Philippines as well? Yeah. I like all the stickers here. So here we got lumpia tongue. Lumpia tongue for 10. We got pork Shanghai. We got pork shao mai. We got nachos. We got shawarma pita. We got like this shawarma with uh, cheese and pita. Shao mai and this is orange rice. Ah. What's the? Java rice. So same like Java rice. Ah, Java rice. But the color is orange. Orange. Why is it orange? I don't know. Uh, Here's the chef. Oh. He's the one who will cook this one. Oh, I see. The chef? Where's the chef? This one, guy. Oh. The, my oh, son. son. Oh, your son. So, what is your name? So, my name is Mac. Oh, Where Mac. Are you? That's my brother's name. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. What a yeah. Why is the rice orange? Can you tell me? Well, it's a secret ingredient. I can uh, tell. You cannot tell. It's a I secret. I can tell. Yeah. So I have to try the rice. Mm -hmm. and try to guess. You should try it first. <laughs> okay. So it's your invention, actually. Mm -hmm. You designed the rice. Be yeah. very, very it's orange. It's the first time. And so, what do you explain the flavor? Like a little sour, a little sweet, or a little. Um, we are just into Filipino taste, so it's kind of sweet, but kind of savory. Okay, kind of savory, kind of sweet. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys are doing something right. I mean, there's a line. There's and, a line. Yeah, so your whole family has kind of contributed different items to the menu. Yeah. So you guys all have collaborated on the different things here. Mm -hmm. So Babe and Mike are your mom and dad. Yeah. And so whose idea was it to open this whole stand up eight years ago? Was it Mike's idea or Babe's idea? Um, both. Uh, both, both decided to open mm -hmm. up. And they opened up here at this street corner? Over there. Okay, over there first. Yeah. Okay. And then they move over here. Yeah, it's because of, and because of the pandemic. Ah, because of the pandemic, I yeah. see. And so, yeah, you invented the orange rice. Mm -hmm. Can you find the orange rice in other places too? No. So because, it's your invention. Yeah. And you're not going to tell me what it is inside. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me about this food here. We've got the Shanghai lumpia. We've got the orange rice with the shawarma. This looks absolutely amazing. So you guys make like a yogurt sauce for this as well. So it's like a yogurt dressing with a very well marinated beef. Okay, I can't, I can't wait anymore. This looks amazing. Mm. Wow. It reminds me of like Mexican tacos on the street. Yeah. Right now we don't have a pita, but just having the tacos without the kind of tortilla. That's what this reminds me of. Mm -hmm. mm. That's really good. Oh yeah. That's like a nice creamy. Creamy cheese. Yeah, creamy. But balanced. Salty. A little bit like Parmesan, but like not so strong, like salty like Parmesan. The cheese is kind of like a warm, neutral flavored cheddar cheese, I would say. That's just very refreshing. I love the yogurt that is inside this. It's like a little mini cabbage salad with meat on top. This is very Filipino. That's very Filipino. Yeah. We need to make an adjustment. You don't get shawarma rice in like Middle East, I think. Middle East, because they're all in pitas. Yeah, mostly pita. Yeah, very chewy. Very nice quality beef though. Like, it's chopped up very thin. The guy right there is cutting it up all the time and making new ones. He's a machine. <laughs> yeah, he's a machine guy. He's a machine guy. Yeah. So I'm sitting next to the inventor of the orange rice, mm -hmm. and he's not going to let me know oh, what's inside of it. I have to try to guess what is inside of it. <laughs> so, orange rice. It looks pretty fun. Mm. It's not your ordinary white rice or your rice. Yeah, yeah, it definitely has got like a little bit of like a um, balanced, a little bit salty, but like not too salty. Almost like a little bit of fat is added to it, like cooked in with the rice. Maybe just a little bit of fat for that flavor. But I could be wrong, I'm not sure. We're not giving up any secrets. I'm just telling you guys what it tastes like. It's very good though. I feel like it's just got this nice balance. And it's definitely not too salty. It's definitely not boring. The rice, I could eat by itself. And I'm happy. I'll try it with the garlic sauce. Oh. 
here. Oh, this is the garlic. Oh yeah. So that's the spicy sauce. And then this is the garlic sauce? Yeah. So this place is famous for the sauces. For the sauces. I love the garlic sauce. Whoa. You love the garlic sauce. Yeah. Oh wow. Garlic sauce is a specialty. Yeah. There's a spicy sauce. So now we have taken the um, you know to another level. Yeah, yeah. we had the sauces. We had to try it by itself first. Now we have like doused it in sauces. And I'm a sauce kind of guy. I love sauce. Me too. Filipinos, they love sauce, yeah, right? We love sauce. So each stand kind of has their own version of the sauce, better and sometimes worse. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean, I definitely notice sometimes it's very bland or it's bland, too sweet. Sweet or yeah. salty. Yeah, sometimes you go to a shawarma stand and they add the sauce and it's like, ooh, that's like mayonnaise with sugar added to it. It's mm -hmm. not, not ideal. But yeah, let's see what this is like here. Mm. But I have a nice balance of like the spicy sauce and the garlic sauce. It is more sweet with the sauces for sure, but it's really good. Like the sauces are addictive. I could add as much sauce. Maybe the rice by itself was like a seven by itself. Yeah. Probably very, very healthy. But when you add the sauce, it brings it up to like a nine. nine. Yeah. It's gonna explode in your mouth. And then you got the salad and the amazing gourmet meat on here. What is a lumpia tongue? I have no idea what toge. that is. Toge. It's toge. It's what? Lumpia toge. Oh, toge. Yeah. Oh, it, it doesn't ah. have the egg. No e egg. No egg. <laughs> I saw lumpia tongue. Lumpia toge. So which one is the lumpia toge? Um, the fast one. See, this is a new addition to the menu. Mm, yeah. Ah, uh, no, the tofu one. Oh. Yeah, but the toge and the lumpia, it was last year. Mm. That is really good when you mix the dressing from the togoya. Very fresh tasting. Mm -hmm. You kind of absorb everything into it. You know, this is like a sponge and it absorbs all the sauce. Yeah. It's super good. Mm. Mm -hmm. So these are all new additions to the menu. Yeah, like a couple years ago, like just two years or like a year ago. So before that, you guys only specialized in shawarma rice. And then for the Loom? Shanghai Lumpia. Yeah. Well, it's up to you if you want to dip it. Mm. There's also this. Uh, um, this for the shawarma one. Oh, that I it was for the yeah. shawarma. I should have used that for the shawarma. That's funny. Mm. Okay, so this Shanghai Lumpia. Not all Shanghai Lumpia is like the same. Some is like a taquito, which like is like basically like this wrap with meat inside. Mm -hmm. It's got this kind of layered dough, like a phyllo dough. It's just like so flaky. Like a five layers yeah. or three layers. Yeah, at least it. three layers. It's like, it feels like there's like five layers. So what made you guys want to branch out and try to make all these different things? You guys decided to expand the business to make it more other options as well? Yeah. The actual shawarma meat is just absolutely amazing. And the sauces are really sauce. like that. Yeah. For the shawarma, like the shawarma with rice, mm -hmm. that sauce is just killer. It's so good. And that's the reason why some of the customers um, are coming back. Yeah, because the sauce. Because is so of the good. sauce and the uh, the meat and the rice. Mm. And the sauce is also a secret ingredient as well. Mm -hmm. Do not let anyone know. Yeah, it's a family ingredient. Who's show my recipe with this? Is this your mom's? Both of my parents. Uh, both of them yeah. kind of designed this one on their own. Every day they make a big. Batch big batches of yeah, big batch every day. So yeah, this thing is really heavy with a lot of meat. Honestly, like I just tried to like open it up. I can't do it with this plastic spoon. I think I need a real spoon to open it up. Like yeah. it's like thick with meat. The meat is packed in there. Okay, I'm gonna give this a try here. Mm. So this is chicken. Um, oh, ah, it's pork. It's yeah. Homemade. It's homemade, yeah, you can tell. Like, there's some herbs inside of it. Which one do you think I should have next? Try the tofu one. Tofu, oh, how do you say this one? In Tagalog? Yeah. Takua. Takua, okay, takua. Yeah. Okay, so takua, so it's basically a fried tofu. Fried tofu. So tofu, that is fried first, and then they cut it up into smaller pieces. There we go. Mm. Oh yeah, that is really good. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, like a vinegar, a little bit of a 
sweetness over it. Yeah, a little bit of sweetness, mm -hmm. but savory. I feel like it's got this, um, a lot of fresh onions chopped in there too, yeah. inside of the, the sauce. That's really good. And then there's some chilies there too, but they're not very spicy. They're just like a little hint of spiciness. Mm -hmm. I love it. And then, uh, how do you guys make your tofu? Just like overnight, let it sit? Or yeah, just overnight. Those? Okay, all the tofu, and then you deep fry the tofu. Yeah. But it's homemade tofu. It's homemade. Wow, okay. This sauce is like a little bit of like coconut vinegar, I feel like. <laughs> a little bit of teriyaki, I think, but it's hard to know. And then some onions, and you know, garlic and peppers. What do you think about Mexican food? Ah, that's my favorite. Oh, it's your favorite yeah. food. So this is almost like an inspiration of a little bit Mexican, mm -hmm. a little bit Filipino, and a little bit of uh, Middle East. Middle East. Tijuana, they have the Tijuana tacos, and they have the meat on the mm -hmm. spit, just like you guys have right there. And that's the Tijuana style. They cut this meat off. Mm -hmm. I believe they got that idea from Turkey. From Turkey. What is the best seller over here at your guys' stall? Um, the number one best seller for our stall um, is the shawarma rice. And then the second is the shawarma pita. Okay, so you have to squeeze it mm -hmm. to get the sauce kind of mixed in through the salad. Yeah. So you don't want the sauce all in the first bite. Mm -hmm. I see. So the trick is to like squeeze it, kind of shake it up a little bit like yeah. that. And then that way the sauce can kind of get in there. How much of this sauce would you put on? Is that the spicy sauce? Spicy sauce. Okay. And this is the garlic sauce. So basically you try to squeeze it, let the sauce drip through the salad. You shake it like that, is that what you would do? I uh, just firmly squeeze it. Oh, squeeze it like that? Yeah. The sauces have kind of soaked down into soaked down the, the, uh, the actual like, like salad. Salad. I feel like all of it's gonna be at the bottom of this mm -hmm. bag. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna try. Oops. Mm. That's what I call a sauce overload. <laughs> it's amazing. You got that cheese in there. Mm -hmm. It's giving a little bit of a creamy savoriness. And then the spicy sauce is great. It's a bit sweet for my taste, but I really just love the overall flavor of this shawarma with all the fresh vegetables yeah. you guys have. In the Philippines, like you feel like this has become such a popular trend of food. So you guys have this location, then you guys have the location that's across the walk, like the way. Over I'm there. there originally our store location is across the street. But we we move here. Across the freeway. Or across the across the street. But th that they still have that location too. No. But is that location also you guys the one across the the, the other location. The other location. Yeah. That's it's, also you guys yeah. too, right? It's still operating until now. Still you guys though. It's not like someone else. Yeah. No one is copying the name. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. When I first got there, I'm like, why is this place the same name as the, the same place name. I'm looking? I, I looked up this one on Google Maps. So you guys have a lot of locals coming through here every single day, like mm. regular customers. Yeah, some and people, not even locals. Oh, yeah. some people come from outside. They come from like all over the city mm, Yeah. have this one. But then some locals also will be eating here every day or maybe every other day. Yeah. You, you recognize That's right. them every day almost? Mm, yeah. Oh, we wow. became friends. Mm. A lot of people became <laughs> A lot friends. of people. A couple years ago, like 10 years or nine years, we have shawarma stand here in the Philippines. But it's, it is not common. So it's like a trend and it's grown and grown. And, and grown and big. grown and grown. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I felt like I, I came to the Philippines 10 years ago. I don't remember seeing like seeing so many shawarma. It, yeah. But I mean, I didn't look for it and I don't remember because it was 10 years ago. But, but now, it's, it's all over the place. And so you guys started on this, and I just didn't know that shawarma was that young in the Philippines. I kind of mm -hmm. feel like Philippines always had this shawarma, shawarma like, for the last, like 40, 50 years mm -hmm. or something, but it's not. It's not. You guys have done burgers for 50 or 60 or 70 yeah. years, but not shawarma. So it's a newer cuisine for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I would have to say, as someone who came to the Philippines like, you know, five years ago, I saw shawarma literally everywhere, everywhere. in Mexico, and yeah. I kind of felt like, you know, this is part of uh, Filipino this, cuisine. Mm -hmm. Like, it really is like, you know, everyday life. Like, people love shawarma. And it's, like, kind of formed into their own taste. I mean, you guys gave me a Filipino cheese, 
on top of the shawarma. On top of shawarma rice. rice. It's like a new invention mm -hmm. kind of food. And I mean, it is called shawarma rice. Mm -hmm. so it's giving credit to you know, the Middle East. Food. Yeah. It's also very much like original Filipino food now at this point. Like, you go all these different shawarma mm -hmm. places with their secret sauces and their secret recipes and the different ways they marinate their pork or their beef or chicken is completely mm -hmm. different from the, you know, Middle Eastern. Middle right? Eastern. I mean, Middle East is great too mm -hmm. as well. But uh, this is also really nice. What is your favorite Filipino food? Mine, like, I like sinigang. Mm, sinigang. sinigang. Ooh, I like sinigang too. The line has not really stopped much. I mean, it's always consistently busy. Yeah. I think. The line isn't too long right now, but I, I can see that it's always it's got always someone busy. making something. And you guys like always run through all your meat mm -hmm. every day, pretty much. Oh, this is a new batch of meat. You know, every day gonna make the new. Uh, do you guys have a time when you guys close, or do you guys just close when you run out of meat? Well, if we run out of meat and we close by nine. Uh, if you yeah. run out of meat, it'll be closed by nine. Early, oh. like early, early oh, than yeah. nine. Earlier than nine. So you typically stay open until nine. But yeah. if you do run out of meat, which does happen sometimes, yeah, you'll be closed at like six, six or seven, seven or eight. Exactly. So gotta get here early if you want to get your shawarma. If you get here like like a bit later, mm. you're not gonna get shawarma possibly. Mm. How often do you guys end up closing early? Like three times a week. Oh, three times a week. So you guys get off work early. It's good. Yeah. Everyone gets off early. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect. So yeah. And what time do you guys open up? Like 10 to 11 in the morning. Okay, about 10-ish, 11-ish. Yeah. And then you guys are open till 9. Till 9. Supposed to be open till 9. Or until you run out of food. Mm -hmm. So guys, if you snooze, you lose. That's all I'm gonna say. Definitely check out this place if you guys have time. Okay, Mac Attack, I'll see you next time okay. when I'm back in Manila. Mm -hmm. Can I call you Mac Attack? Mac Attack. <laughs> Mac Attack. <laughs> see you next time. I see you. Awesome. Bye bye. Bye bye. See, see you guys. Bye. See you. Thank you guys so much. What did you guys think about Babe Mike Shawarma? It's great. Solid. Solid. Very solid. Yeah. Uh, very monster up. Is it the best shawarma in Manila or is yes. it just normal? Gang gang. Gang gang. Ah, oh, okay. And so it's the best one that you know of in Manila. Yes. Yes. Nice. Well, thank you guys so much. Gang. Have a great night or a great day. Oh, what's this drink you're drinking? Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Boom Sung Nong Sagi. This is the banana heart. Yes. Do you like banana heart? Uh, slight. Oh, you slight. like it sometimes? Yes. Uh, um nung nang sagi. Pusu nang sagi. Pusu nang sagi. Yes. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm here at this market. We see that we got the pu nung nang sagi right here. The banana heart. Very, very delicious and nutritious. This is one of my favorite go to dishes here in the Philippines. And we've got the calamansi, we've got green chilies, we've got the garlic, we've got, you know, the bitter melon, eggplant, all these other leafy greens here too. Welcome guys to my mini hotel room here. This is a loft and it's actually a pretty cool little place. It's definitely compact. So it's like not like the most luxurious hotel room, but it's, it gets the job done. So first thing I want to show you guys is the bathroom. You know, bathroom is definitely an important thing. You want your space. This is definitely not a spacious bathroom for sure. I would say, you know, it's it's just fine for doing your business and everything. But uh, yeah, the shower is also a little bit compact for me. As a bigger person, definitely it's um, a little bit on the, oh, there we go, that's the water pressure there. All right, so this is the water pressure you get. It's just fine. It's not an amazing, miraculous water pressure, but it is hot water coming from here, so that's always nice to take a hot shower in the Philippines, so. Definitely not bad, uh, but yeah, that's the water heater right there. So I'm gonna turn this off now. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, and then there's a fan right there. So this place is not fancy. It's just a normal, average little hotel room. Okay, so let me show you the kind of the fun part of this room. So there's um, 
They give you free water here, which saves me about two dollars to three dollars a day UST. So, like 150 peso is what I would probably spend on water on a normal day, buying the big jugs and everything, because I drink a lot of water in the Philippines. So it's really nice that they just give you unlimited jugs of water. They filtrate it, you know, downstairs. This is the sink. The sink is just fine. You get good water pressure in this sink. And uh, it's definitely not like a place made for cooking, but I guess you could, you know, prepare some kind of meal. This is one thing I don't like. This sink has got extremely horrible water pressure. Um, let's see about the, uh, the bum gun. Ooh, that's a very good pressure for the bum gun. Okay, so 10 out of 10 for the bum gun. Uh, yeah, the, the toilet was not working at first, but I just put, like messed around with it a little bit and I was able to get the toilet to work, you know, within the first day. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a fancy toilet. It's just a normal toilet. You do get toilet paper with this room, which is always nice. You know, some places in the Philippines don't give you toilet paper and that could be a deal breaker for some people. They also give you an amenity kit with toothbrush, shampoo, and some other stuff as well. Uh, yeah, conditioner and a soap. That's not bad at all. Okay, so this is my room. This is the, the office space. This is where I get all my work done. I actually was working just now and I'm checking out today. So yeah, they also give you a water kettle, but you can't really plug it in up there. You have to plug it in maybe down here or find some other place for it. Uh, they also give you a TV right here, which is great. This is surprising to me though, that we are on the fifth floor, but you go up these steps and actually you could fall if you, you know, somehow trip and fall down the stairs, you could fall through this glass. So that's a bit scary to me. You can see that the steps down here, I mean, they're very solid steps for sure, but you definitely want to hold on to this as you're walking down because to be honest, I don't want to fall five stories. That does not sound fun. It sounds very dangerous to me. But yeah, I just walk up like this. I hold this the whole way up and right here, you can see that this is the window and that is five stories high. It's pretty scary. So if anything breaks on this platform here, you may be uh, in trouble. So just be warned, you know, this is not the safest hotel. I definitely would not take my kids to this hotel. Like they do not belong jumping around on the, on this kind of platform thing. Uh, but yeah, this is the bedroom up here. It's pretty cool. I definitely like this bedroom style. Sleeping upstairs, it's like a little tree house, a tree fort. And then looking down into the entryway slash living room, office area, it's pretty fun. But definitely, I've stayed in lofts like this before and they were really cool. This one is not my favorite style of loft. It's a little bit too claustrophobic. It does have a better water pressure than my first loft that I stayed in in the Philippines, but it's definitely lacking in the, you know, homey vibes. It doesn't have a sofa. It's just got like this upstairs area where you can lay down. And then we've got the, another kind of desk right here, or I don't know what this is. I guess you could like, well, you could maybe work here as well on your bed if you wanted to like, have a second workspace. They do have AC, which is good. The AC works. It is extremely hot here in Manila. So honestly, like you definitely need the AC. Don't try to save money on not getting AC in Manila during the summertime. I would say though, uh, this hotel, it's a little bit pricey for what it is. It's $18 per night. The staff is really nice. It's free water. There's a security guard downstairs and it's in a pretty prime location here right on the border of Makati and Pasai in Manila. And so it's a good little place. Uh, I'm gonna have to rate this hotel a seven out of 10. It's just got, you know, that one factor of maybe falling out of a five story window. So that's definitely a worrying some factor to me. Also, it's not very well insulated because the window doesn't really seal. So the AC is kind of wasting its energy on just pumping cold air in, but it's also leaving the building too. 
And so, yeah, it's not a bad place. It's just not, like, to my standards, not worth $18. Maybe this would be worth $13, $14. Like, it's okay. I've just stayed in better hotels for $15 in the Philippines. So maybe I'm a bit spoiled. But yeah, it's just fine though. I like the view. I like the fact that we have a window and we have curtains so we can actually close the curtains and sleep in and uh, not be blinded in the morning from the, uh, the sun coming in. But yeah, no, it's a, a nice view for sure. There we go, we can see down there a bit better now. There's a lot of jeepneys. So it's actually really loud with the jeepneys outside. There's these jeepneys that like start honking at like, you know, 10 in the morning, eight in the morning sometimes. It just depends. It, they can do whatever they want down there. It's just kind of a free for all. And uh, yeah, the jeepneys park down there. Uh, but yeah, I like my little work desk space. They've also got some hangers. You know, if you need to hang up a business suit or something, that's a pretty good thing too. Um, you know, it's nice that they have a TV, but I didn't really use it. It does come with a phone as well too here. So yeah, you can make some calls as well. Um, I don't know to who. I think everyone uses a cell phone now. But yeah, I just kind of like these little funky loft hotels. They're always kind of fun to stay in. But this one is just a little bit weird and a little bit too dangerous for me. Uh, one of the staff members said that these little uh, glass things, because they're separate, it can uh, stop you from falling through, but I don't trust it. I feel like if I fell with my whole body force, you know, I slipped and fell down, I would fall through this. So I definitely would be a little bit skeptical to, you know, actually trust that. I, I definitely would not want to fall five stories. I think you would fall and maybe die. But, uh, you know, this room is great. I like the room. Just has got some flaws here, but nothing really that you can do about it. And 18 bucks per night is not bad here in Manila, in this general area of Manila. It's definitely not a bad price. Well, yeah, guys, hope you guys like the room tour. Let me know if you want more tours like this. Oh, hello, sir. Hi, sir, shout out. I have a gift, shout out to you and yes, hotel. Uh, this hotel is called Air Beds, right? Yes, sir. It's a very nice place, I like yes, it sir. very Just much. Just uh, review it online, sir. Oh, review, I will yeah. review it online as well. Great. Uh, food expert. Is this hotel located again? It's like right between Pasai yes, sir. and Makati. So like right on the border of Pasai and Makati. Yes, sir. What do you think about this location? Do you think it's a very good location? Yes, there's a very good location. There's a very near of the food, sir. Yeah, there's a lot of good food here. Yeah, sir. Yeah, we're like 40 minutes from Doha to Paris. We are like 10 minutes away from yes, Aling So Sing. We are like close to a Jollibee. We're next to the metro station. Yes, so this is a very convenient location yes, to be. Very near up the... Metro. Metro, yeah, sir. Yeah, just going up north on the metro. Yes, it's a very convenient way. I mean, sometimes if you go somewhere very far away from the metro, you're gonna end up taking a taxi everywhere. So you can actually save a lot of money if you're gonna go up to Chinatown or somewhere else on your trip. But yeah, definitely uh, pay these guys a visit. Aero Beds. Check them Manila, out. Sir. Manila. Just check in the uh, Facebook or online booking sir. Yeah, yeah, onlinebooking.com. Yeah. But yeah, cool, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Darwin. Darwin sir. Darwin, what a cool name. That's yeah. awesome. Like a child, but the scientist, sir. Yeah, the scientist. He discovered evolution. Yeah. Do you believe in Darwinism? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, you're not Catholic. Catholic, sir. Oh, you're Catholic. Okay. So, do you believe in evolution or do you believe in Catholic or do you believe... Oh, that's personal. Never mind. Never. We don't need to get into that. <laughs>